Okay, so for this problem, we're asked to factor. And when we factor, we have to pull out things. When you've got two terms like this, you always want to pull things out that they have in common. So the first thing we look at is the number. Well, obviously, you've got both of those have 5 that go into it. And that's the only thing that goes into both of them. So we know we're going to pull a 5 out. But then we have to look at that variable because both of them have an x. But we have to decide which do we need, like how many x's do we need? And the answer is you always pull out the smallest exponent. And in this case, which is different than when we're dealing with positive exponents, the smallest exponent is negative 9. So we're actually going to factor out x to the negative 9. And that's going to get us 4, right, because 5 times 4 is a 20, and then I've already got the x to the negative 9, minus, well, I need a 9 to get to 45. But when I pull negative 9x's out of negative 7x's, I need an x squared here because when I remultiply, negative 9 plus 2 is going to give me my negative 7. So do you see how by factoring out the, the smallest exponent, I turned all my exponents in here to positives? Now you're not done either. First off, I need to deal with that negative 9. So the negative 9, we don't want to leave it as a positive, so we're going to put x to the 5 over x to the negative 9 first. And then second, you need to recognize that this is the difference of two squares. It's two terms. 4 is a square, 9 is a square, x squared is a square. So it's going to be 2 minus 3x times 2 plus 3x. And so this is your final answer. Um, remember, when you're doing these problems that have negative exponents, as in your factoring, always pull out the smallest exponent possible. Same thing is true if you have fractional exponents. Always pull out the smallest exponent you can.